Should you hire new? If yes, how? Or should you promote team members internally? Hey, and welcome, everyone. It's day 78. It's a Wednesday. We are getting to the end spurt. It's the middle of the week. It's been a crazy week also in the markets. So I hope you are not getting too crazy by yourself and uh, you can really focus on the task at hand. Now, over the past, well, obviously 10 months since all this uh, drama unfolded and then the winding up application and so on, obviously a lot of team members have sadly left. Some I really understand on some, yeah, it was I really would have loved for them to stay. At the end, there was also times where we actually had to hire. And so we're going to actually talk about next week about, well, ways how to let team members go, what to focus on, because um, obviously that's also a relevant part out of a company. But today I want to talk about how to hire, what to focus on, and maybe you should hire new or maybe you should do some internal kind of promotion. Now, let's first talk about when you generally consider someone. You're probably considering three things. There is experience, skill, and team principles. Now, what does this mean? Well, experience and skill many times think it's the same, but it's actually not. Many times skill is highest, right? When you come out of college, because you have like all this kind of knowledge and many times you're very young and fresh and you're really good and with new technologies and so on, but you're really lacking the experience. And many times there are people who have worked in a field for 20 years, Maybe they not have the skill or they're, they're not adapted to the latest technology, but they just have all this experience. Now, if we put all of that aside, right? Many, many people always call these two things aptitude. Then you have the other side, which is attitude, team principles. And we discuss a lot about team principles and you know that I'm a humongous fan of team principles. And I think hiring, firing, promotions, um, any kind of salary increase and so on should all be done via team principles. And that's already where I'm leading with all of this. When you talk to recruiters, what happens is they're really good at showing you their experience. You get this as form of a CV. And that's really the key focus. Now in many, many jobs, right? Um, especially engineering, you can really standardize that as well. You can have some skill-based tests, right? And then sometimes you even have personality tests, sure. But at the end, that really fits a bit more in into the skill kind of side of things. The crucial part, at least for me, aside obviously the experience and the skill side, is really kind of the culture side, is the team principle side. And it is relatively difficult to kind of ask interview questions that are related to that. And I'm not going to go into the specifics of the interview process, because to be fair, if you're watching this 90 day game plan and you're in a company, many times you don't need this elaborate um, interview process, right? Um, it's, it, it's more on you to have the general kind of concepts. And uh, the idea here is more, you need somehow to check the experience. Many times, maybe the recruiter does that. It's very straightforward on the CV. You can do this with background checks as well. Then uh, the other one is the skill-based function. This uh, obviously really has a bit to do also with the results that a person can get. Um, obviously, you can test this as well. What the key function is for me has always been these cultural questions. And I can really guide you to one thing who does this really well. Amazon has these so-called behavioral questions. And without going too detailed on this, you should really kind of read up on this, how Amazon does this, and uh, really understand the, the, the insides and outside of that. And I tell you one thing, it is very, very difficult to learn team principles and judge them from like super short meetings. Because many, many times, right, it takes a while to actually, for, for team principles to really shine through to see if someone has candor, if someone doesn't have candor, if someone is resourceful, if someone isn't resourceful. And that's really, really crucial. Over time, this can really kind of only come out a bit and it takes time. So this is not a cool, the, the absolute crucial question. When you are looking for a new position and we've had these discussions a lot, should we promote someone internally or do we need to hire someone from the outside? It is really important to understand what you're looking for the most right now. If you're really looking more for the experience, then you really need to look at, okay, does someone have that right experience? If not, then even if someone has the right team principles, if you really need the experience, it's just very difficult to get the experience if someone doesn't have that yet, right? Then you just need to hire from the outside and you really need to do very, very, very good um, team cultural questions to really check for that. Because the worst part is, and I've made these mistakes, I hired people who are very skilled, very experienced, wrong team culture, and it really hurts the team. 
So you have to do very good kind of questions on that. However, if it's maybe less about the experience, it's really maybe a bit more of the skill set. Maybe the person needs to advance the skill set. Many times when a regular team member becomes a team lead, is a senior team member, becomes like a head off. It's many times not necessarily half the experience. It's more on let's kind of grow together. You need some more skill set. Here, I would almost in promote internally and I would really look for the right person with the right kind of team principles. Because if you have people who are hungry, who are who want to grow, who are resourceful, they will figure out how to do this and they will kind of educate themselves to step up and to be, to move into those into this team lead role. Then I would almost promote internally. So it's not that it's a right or wrong. It's really more on what you're looking for. It, just also understand many times you really need to talk to your team member on why you didn't promote them. Was it because the experience is just way more important than anything else? And otherwise you just have to be frank, right? And it's, it's very, very tough, especially from the very early small team. Um, when you have this initial core team of five to 10 people, and then suddenly you need to bring in an outsider who becomes a team lead for these team members. And you really have to explain this to them and say, Hey, look, you are a 10 out of 10 from team principles, and I know you're super skilled, but what we need is we need someone who comes in and has walked the path before so that you get this experience, you can learn from them. And this is probably not going to be your last gig. So afterwards, you can actually be the one who's leading someone. And believe me, this is not easy. I've had this over and over again, and uh, you just need to talk to the team members. And uh, yeah, but it's absolutely crucial that you kind of really understand who to hire and who to promote and what to do it for. So absolutely crucial. The key kind of keyword in a sense is uh, behavioral questioning. And uh, that's at least how I do all of my hiring talks. And so I hope that helps you a bit. With this, have a beautiful Wednesday. I hope yeah, the week, as I said, is uh, going well. And uh, yeah, you're not getting all too crazy. So I think this is really crucial. Tomorrow, I'll talk a bit about what to expect after the nine days. It gives you a bit of an overview. And then we're going to dive a bit deeper into the product ideas, marketing ideas, and so on. So if you don't want to miss any of that, then stay tuned for tomorrow. Click the subscribe button, click the bell icon, and then we'll chat tomorrow. Thanks so much, everyone. Happy Wednesday. See you tomorrow. Julian, bye-bye.